There we go. Okay, we are live. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another SPFBO or SPFBO as it's called uh, blog. Today we or blog panel. Really, I'm not a blogger. Let me just throw that right out there. <laughs> Uh, so I'm here today with a couple of authors who are in the Before We Go blog. I gotta get my head on straight. Um, for those who are new and don't know what I'm talking about, Spiffbo is a competition where 300 of us authors have all put our books up uh, for consideration for like a contest type thing, except it's the self-published fantasy blog off. So 10 different bloggers have split those 300 books between them and are going to review them and um, put forward some to can potentially <laughs> be finalists, semi-finalists, and one winner, of course. And this is all organized by Mark Lawrence for free. So thank you, Mark. And before we go, blog is one of those bloggers. So I've got Helen here coming back, and I've got Palmer, who I've met for the first time. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for organizing it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Thank you for hosting. It's you're doing pleasure. a whole you're doing a whole marathon, right? You're doing like two a day or something. <laughs> yeah, well, so I did three yesterday. I've got three today. I've wow. got a few next weekend. There's seven left, I think, after the ones wow. today, six or seven. Wow. And then the big blitz at the end of June. So if you're watching and you're like, oh, I want to see all of this, you can watch all the ones you missed in the Spiff Bow playlist that's on my channel, and you can subscribe to get notifications when we go live. But uh, so yeah, Palmer, Helen, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, which book you entered in Spiffbo, and what kind of fantasy it is. Uh, okay, shall I go first? Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm Barbara Pickering Palmer. Oops, I just revealed my real name. Yeah, so my, my full name is Barbara Palmer Pickering. And so I use my middle and my last name as my pen name. Palmer Pickering. And one of the reasons I did that was for a couple of reasons. One is I never liked Barbara. Um, and another thing which has been in conversation forever kind of among authors is Palmer is kind of, you can't really tell what gender it is. Right. And there's, there's this seems to be a kind of a somewhat of a bias against female authors in fantasy and science fiction. I mean, I've heard some men say, Oh, I just, never used to read female authors because I just never thought the books would resonate with me. And then once they read them, they're like, oh, okay, I guess, you know, it doesn't matter. So because I've written, this is uh, Heliotrope. This is the book I entered in Spiffbo 9. And it's pretty violent. I mean, it's about a, it's from the point of view of a, a retired male warrior who's kind of the best warrior in his kingdom. Lots of blood and gore, sword fighting, you know, um, themes about being a father, you know, and I've never been a father, um, but it seems to work. So, so yeah, that's just my little, little it's uh, epic fantasy, kind of heroic fantasy, sword and sorcery. Although we could have a long discussion about what sword and sorcery actually means, because <laughs> I'm not really sure. But there's swords and there's sorcery in it, sort of sorcery. So we could again debate what is sorcery. Like, does it have to be spell casting to be sorcery? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So, because it doesn't have spell casting per se, it's really mm -hmm. a little bit. Anyway. And it's a big, thick book. It is. Who are it like, I want a big book. On Mark Lawrence's list of the fattest books, although Kian Ardalin's 11th Cycle is actually fatter than this. So this is actually third from the ones I know, but Kian's wasn't for some reason it wasn't in a Goodreads list. So it didn't get on his website or something. But yeah, it's almost 800 pages. But people say it flies by really fast. It's written in pretty straightforward prose. And it's a single point of view character. The world building is pretty straightforward and it's presented in a linear fashion. Um, so there's not a huge kind of lore that you have to absorb at the outset with lots of different characters. There are a few, quite a few characters, but it's one point of view character. So it's pretty easy to read. Yeah, even though it's long. Awesome. Yeah. And Helen, welcome back. It's so good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. Um, so yeah, I'm Helen Rigg Pedersen. And this year I've entered the Briar Crown into SBFPO. And it is a romanticy fantasy romance call it what you will um yeah not quite as as big as yours <laughs> um it's actually a very quick read but um yeah it's it's 
it's one POV. Um, it's just got all the the sort of warm, gooey feelings and a li little bit of spice, if that's your thing. So, um, yeah. <laughs> just enough. Just, just enough. enough, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I, so. I started that actually. I did. I kind of did a. I read the first couple chapters of a lot of of books, kind of trying to figure out what to read next. I I read some of it. It's, you know, you, it's fantasy. I mean, and it's, you know, it's uh, it's not all romance, right? I mean, it's like it's not just no. stuff going on. You know, right? No, because when when I'm writing it, I was. Uh, I, I, the world just expands in my head. I can't just keep it to this one nice little story about this couple. No, no, it, it takes on a life of its own almost. And, and I do also write epic fantasy, so I can't just stick to one small, like, small town romance kind of thing. It'd be in an epic world, so. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So looking if forward you're to watching, it. you're like, oh, there's two options. There's a shorter <laughs> option and a longer option. You can actually grab both Helen and Palmer's books in the description box. I've got the links there to make it nice and easy. Um, because really, there's a little bit of everything for everybody in Swiftbo this year. I'm going to drop drop Zach's link. But Zach Argyle, who's not participating this year, but was a previous participant, um, put together this great interactive list of all the Swiftbo books. And you can sort it by audiobook, by KU, um, and it's sorted by blog. So you can see whose books are in which blog. And since I'm doing my TBR by blog, <laughs> they're like, okay, I'm going to do Fantasy Factions first, and then I'm going to do the next one. Um, it's been really helpful because I can just go bye, 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 bye. And next week I'll try to do another five, and we'll do we'll go from there. Um, makes me wish I hadn't canceled my KU subscription like the month before. <laughs> Catherine, did you submit a book as well to Spiffbo 9? Yeah, yeah. So this year is my first year doing Spiffbo. Um, I've been lurking for a year or two, but um, I've got the Violet Twisted Fate uh, in this year. I'm true. in the Fantasy Book Critic blog, though. I'm not in with Before We Go blog. Um, and mine is also Epic Fantasy with a, I like to say it's a splash of romance. The romance is not the focus of the book, um, as people who've read it will quickly find out. <laughs> But there, there is a little bit of it. Mine's got like the elves and centaurs and dwarves and oh, cool. um, all that, all that stuff. How and long is it? Uh, mine is about three hundred sixty pages. It's three hundred forty pages in the paperback. Um, is that your your debut release? Yeah, it's my debut. Yeah, I I had a really hard time, and I told somebody on one of the first blogs that I wondered if I should have put in my newest series first. Um, because it was way darker. So Vow is sort of just classic epic fantasy, good versus evil. It's got a couple darker scenes in it that might be a little mature. So I was like, it's not a YA. Uh, but my new series is dark, borderline grim dark. Um, very little romance in the first book whatsoever. And when I realized whose blog I was in, and who is assigned to it and i saw who her favorite comp authors were i was like oh <laughs> put my other book in. but you never know who you're gonna get and there's a really wide variety of books um, there's of always great... next year so you have yeah, a book exactly. up for next year already and so you gotta like jump okay. in and the first how long is it gonna like take to go to close down next year like it took 41 minutes for the 300 entries to be in plus. I'm giving it 10 minutes or less on the record. Oh, yeah, five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> that was freaking scary, man. Like I was up at 5 a.m. and um, I didn't prepare in advance, so I didn't have like all my links ready. So I was panicking because I knew like there was such a fever around it. And I think it took me like three or five minutes to enter, but it, it had like 240 entries by like nine minutes or something That's like crazy. that. crazy. Yeah. So tell me how it was for you guys. Like, were you up and ready and had it done? Or were you one of the people that's like, I'm driving to work and I've got to stop and get this submitted? Like, how did that work? Um, it was a bit mixed for me because I was actually on holiday. Um, and it's sort of like the first time I've seen uh, my sister and her family in five years. So we were having this big dinner and, and 
you know, it was sort of like at two o'clock. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, just got to leave the party and go do this. But then my tablet, I, I got there, like left 15 minutes before, you know, to set up and refresh, refresh. But then my tablet wouldn't let me copy the links for some oh, reason. No. So I was like, quick, somebody give me a laptop with actual buttons. Oh, no. <laughs> but it all worked out. So, so, so your party lasts an hour this competition lasts months so i need to get in like today because yeah. you had the time difference too that you had to take into effect for me yeah it was 5 a.m my time yeah. um i think i i also entered book in spiffo five and i think it was th that year it was like midnight for me or something I could, he like kind of moves the times around sometimes to help people in different time zones so yeah you know i set my alarm and it was uh andrew d meredith uh, mm -hmm. had a little, uh, mm -hmm. kind of hang out. So I was on that and that was fun. Yeah, me too. Andrew yeah. and KE Andrews are people who talked me into putting in my book this year. Cause they're like, what's the worst that can happen. You're going to make a great community or be part of a great community regardless. And then, you know, that's the worst that can happen is you don't ever get anything more than that. And that's been more than enough by itself. Uh, but Andrew had a launch party. And if Andrew does one next year, I highly recommend it, especially if you're new doing Spiffo for the first time, because it was so encouraging just to be on and be like, okay, make sure that you have your tabs open. Make sure that you've got this. It was like really, really helpful. So thank you, Andrew. Um, but yeah, so now we're in the waiting period where we get to wait five months to see if we survived the cut. Although somebody said yesterday on one of the blogs that before we go, started cutting books as early as day two last year. And oh, uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> is this your first year doing it, Helen Palmer? Or is this no? I actually entered um, Waking as a Minor last year. Uh, I was in Esme's group, um, and you know, I got cut with the bloodbaths, but you know, that's part of the fun of the competition, and I had a great time. So, um, but yeah, I was a little bit more like, okay, just 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 chill out a bit more this year, just see how it goes, have fun. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Like I said, I entered uh, Spitfo 5 Moon Deeds. It was science fantasy and I made it to the semifinals. But yeah, some blogs. Um, yeah, I know. And guess who was in my cohort with me? Sort of Kaigen. Like, oh. so oh. yeah. So there was, I had no chance. I had like zero chance. <laughs> <laughs> but Kitty G was the, uh, the judge. Mm -hmm. And, um, and this, and that's how I found this community. I had no idea because I had, you know, I had no, I had no community, no indie author community. And so Kitty ended up telling me about Dom, Dominish, Dominish Reads or whatever his channel is. Dom's, um, he has an indie author showcase, you know, and so. I reached out to him and I got on his showcase and then I started following his discord. And then th that's how I met everybody. And now mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, have tons of friends I feel like. So it's been really fun. Yeah. yeah. So having both done it before and me being my first time, so I don't know what to expect coming in the next few months. Um, <laughs> what advice do you have for the newbies doing it this year? D different blogs handle their cuts differently. Like you, one of you said, some of them start cutting like immediately as soon as they know it's not going to make it they publish that it's been cut and so you'll start seeing like both on mark's website and like zach's and other people track you'll start seeing like these red cuts you know or your or your book cover will become grayed out and <laughs> so it's just yeah it's it's terrible but some uh, and some blogs kind of wait until they've read the entire batch and they've all agreed some of the teams. And so those can come almost at the last minute. So yeah, it's a total waiting game. Mm. And again, I think I'd say big just, thanks just to all remember the it's, it's a fun competition. Like don't get too disheartened if you get cut because in, you know, only 10 books go through. So, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's fun. Enjoy the community. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not, don't think, oh, I've been cut, my book's a bad book. It's just, you know, taste of the judges. And so just remember, it's 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 fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, even if, even uh, just entering, it gets you some exposure. Mm -hmm. And to me, as an indie author or self-published author, there's 
it's really hard to get exposure and to get people to even know about your book or to be interested in it. And just entering it means you're on people's radar. And so that just helps a lot. And a lot of good books get cut immediately because it's like mm -hmm. it just didn't land with someone that it, it resonated with. So, Well, when you're up against this year, so many uh, great books, yeah. it's like, even if you get cut early, there's the, okay, I went out with some of the best. And um, that's really encouraging. I feel sorry for the bloggers this year. I really do. If I had to pick one winner just from the 80 I've read, I'd be like, <laughs> I don't know how many one to put forward. That's like all the, all the tough feelings there. Um, but yeah, so I've, on, I've been doing this for fun question on the panel. So the people like AF, who I see is on, Kareem, I know is on. Um, who've been following, they know what's about to come. <laughs> We're going to yes. ask a question about your book world. Uh, we've asked about antagonists and pets and food and ordinary fears. And for you guys, we are going to talk about the weather, but not how's the weather where you are is really what kind of weather shows up in your story. Does it make a difference in your book? Uh, what are these characters up against on their journeys in your world? Hmm. Do you want to go, Helen? Um, yeah, I guess. Um, well, the, the book is sort of set around spring, summer, and it's really quite hot um, in parts of the book. But it's it's more rather weather, I would say climate is a real thing in this world. And particularly with some of the, the backstory that, that goes with this book, because um, we start off in Domovnia. And their magical powers is they're descended from dryads and naiads, and they have to together keep nature in balance. But uh, 25 years prior, they were invaded from the north. And this country in the north is plagued with long, long winters, very short summers, whereas Domovnia was a uh, land of abundance and... Um, uh, yeah, but when when we open the the scene, that is not the case, and the and nature is a bit out of balance, which is why it is very sort of hot. And um, yeah, I, I can't say too much more than that, otherwise it will have significant spoilers. But um, yeah, so it, it's more sort of climate that's that's important in the book and in other books that are coming in the series. So. Yeah, I love that. I love stories where the environment makes a difference on how the characters get to the goal. Hey, Tori Hawks is on and says, hey, Palmer. Hey, Tori. So, yeah, Palmer, tell us a little bit about your book. Yeah, so weather-wise, um, weather plays an important part in the second part of the book. So my book is broken into three parts, and each part kind of is based in a different kingdom. And in the second part, um, it's it's severe winter. I think Tori knows a little bit about severe winters being in Minnesota, um, but this is you know like really heavy snowfall. And so it's it's just part of the scenery um, and part of the kind of the world there. It doesn't uh, it doesn't it doesn't really impact. It's not really a plot point. It's just more of the world building. Um, there's just like kind of a slight aspect to it, which I can't really talk about. Um, yeah, you're Vikings. Uh, yeah, which I can't really talk about having to do with, with trying to figure out the magic system that the weather influences potentially a little bit, but yeah. Um, just, you know, just, I, I tend to, in this book, I get very descriptive in terms of scenery and wanting to people feel like they're in the place that the characters are in. So I, I get into kind of the what it's like to be in winter and how you have to live and how to dispose of snow and all those details. So, mm -hmm. yeah, in mine, um, technology is seen at the beginning, but then we're fast forwarding 500 years in the future and nature's reclaimed most of all that stuff. So it's a very simple uh, hunter gatherer type lifestyle with one big village for the humans and um, their little castle. And when the evil dimension opens up, it starts shifting their weather. 
um, and that's really the first sign as the frost mm -hmm. comes early they're having to harvest everything um, and being someone who loves epic fantasy so much I tend to overwrite in my first draft so I ended up cutting out what is a giant pickling scene <laughs> from them trying to save all their crops and like preserve them and my developmental editor is like we do not need to know I should not know how to pickle something after reading this book I was like okay we're cutting this out <laughs> I might introduce it someday in the future like how to pickle things with Queen Arlena like I don't know but now it's just like a short little couple paragraphs and that's it but yeah, the, the weather is sort of the indicator in mind that all the bad things are about to come. <laughs> Here it comes. And then a whole bunch of cold and rain and yeah, all of, all of that good stuff. So yeah, we talked a little bit about the next five months, but from a writing perspective, editing perspective outside of Spiffbo, do you guys have anything that you're working on this summer that's going to sort of help keep you distracted from all the Spiffbo news? Um, I'll let Palma go first. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have two work, works in progress. Um, so one is one is in one is done. Basically, it's um, I've gone through a beta round. It's in developmental editing, but I'm not I'm not planning on doing any major rehauling uh, of the book. It's pretty simple. I, I did it as a break, just on a lark. I wrote a lit RPG book. It's pretty lighthearted. It's called Dark Town, and it's my plan is to enter it in Spiffbo Ten, Spiffbo X, Spiffbox. Um, yeah, so so that's fun. Um, and uh, then I'm also working on the book three of the series, Star Children Saga, which was what I entered the first book for Spiffbo Five, um, and that is totally kicking my butt. I'm just like, what have I gotten myself into? How can I like? you know, really pull this off because it's, it's a long series, but I'm breaking it into trilogies. So this is the wrap up of a trilogy. So, and my, this world is really complicated. Um, so yeah, um, I'm gone back to like outlining and just really writing, doing the whole like planner, plotter, plotter thing, like writing out characters, motivations, character arcs, um, you know, what MBTI type they are. <laughs> well, I haven't, that's, maybe I should do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's been just, I've been tearing my hair out, but I'm about to jump back into actually writing. I've written quite a lot of it, um, but I haven't been happy with it. So I'm, I'm gonna get back into actually writing like maybe today, get out yeah. of the outline mode. So yeah. Good luck, you got Thank this. You. <laughs> but you, Helen um well my um the second book in my epic fantasy series reverter rising is currently with the editor so that's Yay. exciting um obviously have to go through it again afterwards but um <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's on the timeline and i am currently doing my first sort of round of edits revisions of the it's not necessarily the next book in the Briar Crown series that because they're they're supposed to be read as standalones, but they do link in together. Um, yeah, but it's it's been giving me a bit of a hard time. So um, taking far too long to write, and now that it's written, I'm like, oh yeah, I've got to change that. I've got to change that. That's the whole the whole section's got to come out. Um, so I'm working on that. Um, and there might be some audiobook stuff in the works as well. So that's oh, very exciting. That's exciting. Yes. All the things How about you? behind the scenes for the readers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, you have no idea how many times you read your book until you're editing it over and over and over. <laughs> and then what's weird, though, is when I was going through Val, that was my debut. So it came out two years ago in July. I was like, I'll never, I'll have this book memorized in my head. And then you get into writing other things and everything. And then you come back and you're like, did I write that? Was that something I wrote? I don't remember writing this. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun experience, actually. Yeah. You're like kind of read it fresh. Be like, sometimes I'm like, oh, wow, that's really good. Did I write that? I don't remember writing that. <laughs> yeah, or did like, my oh, God, that in did there? put a press like yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It always seems to be the opposite of what you think when you're writing. Oh yeah, yeah, this is really good. And then you come back and you're like, oh no. But then if you're writing it, having a hard time, and then you come back and oh no, 
no, it isn't as bad as I thought, actually. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yes. So well, what do you, you work guys on? So much for taking oh, time. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Palmer. There was a little. Oh, I was just line. asking what you're working on. Oh well, June is my busy season. I'm an editor, uh, so I will be editing the whole month. Um, and then after that, I've got a couple of projects that I'm working on that I'd like to wrap up. I've got a book that's owed to my readers, um, the third volume of my Lord's Gambit series, which is my favorite one <laughs> with Pyrus. Each each of the books in that series follows a different main character in the same universe. And so you've got a knight and a pirate king in that one. And they're both very snarky and witty and different than a lot of the other characters I've written. So I've had a really good time with it. But yeah cool but i wish you both the best of luck going forward <laughs> and everybody who's watching who's an author like tori and kareem and af i believe is in it too good luck everybody this year we this is so exciting <laughs> yeah thank you so much it's great meeting everyone so yes. yeah we'll be see you online and yes and at the award ceremony <laughs> Dude, yes. like our finalist coins all of us everyone who's watching mm -hmm. and everyone in here right now so yeah, yeah. yes it's it's a a yeah. group so we yeah. can be there so yes yes we'll work that one out somehow <laughs> <laughs> somehow we're gonna do a ginormous lot right <laughs> multiple monitors do, 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 do. <laughs> oh but seriously thank you both so much for being here best of luck Thank and everybody, you. if you want to meet some more authors, make sure to subscribe for the other panels coming up soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.